hey everyone, I'm including this video as an addendum to video 37 where I talk about finding the exponentials of uh, complex valued I, uh, like matrices that have complex valued eigenvalues. And so I, I made a comment in that video uh, along the lines of like, you need a zero uh, in your A minus lambda I matrix to allow you to find the complex eigenvector uh, easily. And so what do I mean by that, right? And so this video then, uh, the, whole, the whole goal of this video is to clear up uh, that comment right there. And hopefully it makes sense after this video. So uh, let's bear, bear with me here and we'll start. So uh, let's take this matrix, whoops, not, not, not purple. And let's take this matrix A is equal to two, four, negative five, uh, six, negative six, negative three, 10, and negative three, negative two, six. Okay, and so lambda, you, you'll find your characteristic polynomial and you'll find your eigenvalues and there'll be lambda is equal to uh, one and two plus or minus three i, right? And remember, since this matrix here is in M3R where all the entries are real, right? So that's what the R means there. Um, then our complex valued eigenvalue is going to come in a conjugate pair, right? So we have a plus and we have a minus, okay? And so uh, it, you go through your steps, lambda equals one, et cetera, et cetera. You should get then your uh, eigenvector uh, V1, you should get one, 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 right? And so that's not the point of this video. You know how to find the eigenvector um, for a real valued eigenvalue. So what do we care about then? We care about this guy. We care about lambda is equal to two plus three i. And again, because uh, there's this complex conjugate thing going on with how eigenvalues show up, there's no need to consider the, the other complex eigenvalue, right? I can just consider one of them, and then I, all I have to do is then find one eigenvector uh, corresponding to that one complex eigenvalue. And as you, you've seen from the methods shown then in video number 37, um, you, you don't even need to find another complex valued eigenvector, even though it essentially comes for free, right? So let's, let's consider then this two minus three i character here. And so what is a minus lambda i? A minus lambda i in this case is going to equal negative three i four negative five, negative six, negative five minus three i 10, negative three, negative two, and four minus three i, okay? And so this is where then I mean that you need a zero because if you just simply try to brute force an eigenvector, uh, say that you multiply something, uh, this matrix here by X, Y, Z, and you need to get this zero vector, uh, you're trying to brute force it. And so you let, you assume X is something, right? And you assume Y is something, you assume Z is something, except if there's no zero in any of these entries here, right? Look, in each column, or each row and each column, there's not a zero. And so you, it's really hard then to assume what X, Y, and Z can be. So instead, what we're gonna have to do is then we're gonna have to row reduce this matrix here uh, and get zeros somewhere. And so you can just proceed then by row reducing uh, in your, 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 your usual favorite ways. And so what I'm gonna do here then is I'm gonna zero out these two guys, okay? And how do I zero out those two guys? Well, uh, my first column is negative three i four negative five, and then I'm going to take this row plus two times uh, uh, plus uh, row row two plus two times row one, okay, and then I'm going to take row three, and I'm going to take uh, oh, not two times row one, but two i times row one, okay, and then I'm going to take the last row uh, here, and I'm going to take that row, row three plus i times row one. Okay, and what do I get? So here, row two times i times row uh, row two plus two i times row one. Uh, two i times row one is equal to uh, so here this becomes six, and then this becomes uh, eight i, and then this becomes negative ten i, right? And so I'm adding uh, this to the second row and I get zero, negative five plus three i, uh, negative five minus three i plus eight i becomes negative five plus five i, okay? And then 10 minus 10 i, so that's 10 minus 10 i because it's 10 plus a negative 10 i, all right? 
And then what is row uh, row three plus i times row one? Well, i times row one then is just this guy divided by two, so it's three, four i, and negative five i. And when you add that to row three, I get zero, negative two plus four i, and then this becomes four minus three i plus a negative five i, so that becomes four minus eight i, okay? All right, cool, so I just row reduced it, uh, and I got two zeros now, right? I got a zero here, uh, and I got a zero here. And what does that mean? That just makes this, my life a lot easier in assuming what x, y, and z can be in my eigenvalues. So, for example, I'm just gonna take this row, right? And, and let's say I now I have zero, negative five plus five i, and 10 minus 10 i, right? And I have to multiply this by x, y, z, right, to get just the value zero, right? Because essentially I'm taking this value, this row, I'm multiplying by this column, and I need to get the second uh, entry in the zero, in the, my resulting uh, zero vector. So, okay. So this needs to be zero, and so what can I do, right? So right off the bat now, we can just ignore what x is, and I can try to guess what i has to be, right? And it looks like I can uh, I can guess what y and z have to be. And from eyeballing, it looks like if I make y equal to two, right? If I make y equal to two, uh, then I get negative 10 plus 10i, which is exactly the opposite of this guy which means then I can just make z equal to one. And so if, if that's the case, and I make y equals two and z equals one, if you multiply this out right here, you get exactly zero, which is good, right? Because I didn't have to worry about what x was, all right? Because this first entry was zero. All right, now what do I have to do? Now I have to take this top row and I have to get zero as well. So now I need three i, uh, negative three i, four, negative five times x to one is equal to zero. And now I can just solve for x, right? Because this gets me negative three i x plus four minus five is equal to zero, or plus eight minus five is equal to zero, right? Four times two is eight. And then you get negative three i x is equal to uh, negative three, x is equal to, do, 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 x is equal to a one over i, right? And then you see that, oh, okay, so x is equal to a one over i, which is if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying it by the conjugate, uh, negative i over negative i, uh, you'll see that this is just then negative i over one, which is negative i, okay? And so you'll see x is negative i, which gets me then my complex value eigenvector v2 is negative i two one right and so notice we didn't even have to use this last row uh to figure this out we didn't even have to use this last row all i had to do was take the second row and you can use the last row as a, a you can use it as a check i mean it, it'll work and so this is how you find eigenvectors then so again to recapitulate the steps right you you have two uh, you have two plus three i subtracted along the diagonals and then you want to just row reduce in your standard row echelon ways. Uh, get your zeros uh, here, right? In, in just in the standard ways. And then you just pick, uh, once you get the zeros, you just pick on individual rows. And you need to pick a row that has a zero in it. So you either could have picked the second or third row. It doesn't matter. Uh, in my case, I took the second row because I could easily eyeball and see that y equals two and z equals one satisfy uh, this matrix multiplication equation here. And that gets me zero, all right? And then I take uh, my guess with the two and the one, and then I go to the, I go to the row that doesn't have a zero in the first column, which is the first row, right? And then I take that row, the negative three, four, negative five, and then I multiply by x, two, one, set it equal to zero, solve for x, and you'll see that x is equal to uh, negative i, which gives me my final vector, uh, eigenvector, which is v2. And so we see that v2 is negative i, two, one. And this is indeed an, an eigenvector. And so, again, uh, that's how we do it. That's how we find complex value eigenvectors. That's what I mean when I said you need a zero uh, in your matrix uh, to find your complex value eigenvector because it makes these assumptions, it makes these guesses down here, uh, it makes these guesses a lot easier to do, okay? Rather than dealing with a row and three unknowns. All right, so 
Lastly, then, of course, I'm going to mention that v3 is simply going to be i21, and that's because uh, we're leveraging the fact that uh, complex, uh, co complex eigenvalues come in conjugate pairs, and so any complex uh, value in v2, so that would just be this i, uh, just goes to then its conjugate, which is positive i. Uh, so it goes from negative i to positive i in the last eigenvector, okay? And if you watch video 37 before you watch this video, you'll see that uh, this v3 vector actually, it, 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 like, it corresponds to lambda equals 2 minus 3i, right? While v2 corresponds to uh, lambda equals 2 plus 3i. Um, so v2 goes to this guy up here, right? So here then we see that v2... Uh, is equal to negative i to 1, and v3, uh, v3 goes to this guy. Um, in, in the video, then, in uh, in video 37, when we're finding exponential, you'll see that we never use v3, right? All we have to do is use 1, uh, is find the complex eigenvector for one of the complex eigenvalues. You don't need both, even though both are really easy to find. So that's all I have, and this is the last video. Again, I'm including it as an addendum. Uh, for video 37 it's not going to have its own title uh, and the video 38 will be the introduction to uh, differential equations